Welcome and good morning to this year's Bitcom's Privacy Conference. For everybody who joined us uh, yesterday, welcome back. For everybody who's joining us for the first time this year, welcome. Thanks for joining. We have a lot of interesting uh, topics on our agenda today. Uh, I'll briefly talk about that in a minute, maybe two words about me. My name is Re Rebecca Weiss. I'm Head of Trust and Security at Bitcom, and I have the distinct pleasure of coordinating our work at Bitcom regarding data protection in our working group. Maybe before we start with the contents of uh, this year's conference, I would like to uh, introduce you to our conference platform so you can make the most of your virtual conference experience today. You can find um, <clears throat> the, the community section in, in your app where you can see who is joining today as well. Please feel free to make the most of the networking opportunities on the platform. You can connect to other participants and chat there as well. And saying chat, uh, that leads me to, to another uh, very important section. Um, every session will have, uh, will have a, a chat possibility, so you can post questions um, or maybe even share some material that you see um, uh, or that you feel is important uh, for, for, the, for the audience, uh, for me, so I can include it into the program or for the speakers as well. Also, as we are uh, together here in, in the virtual setting, it's always nice to hear from you in, in the chat. So please feel free to give us feedback or even just say, hello, I'm from, I don't know, Munich, Belgium, from the US or wherever you're dialing in from today. A big thanks also to all of our partners. You can also find the partner section uh, in, in our platform uh, today, of course, because our partners basically made this conference possible and it allowed you all to join us for free. So thank you. Um, most of the partners this, this year have been, um, yeah, have been supporting us for many, many years and we are very glad that they did so again this year. Our partners also are an integral part of, of our program, so uh, I absolutely invite you to join their sessions as well. And regarding sessions, um, I would definitely recommend that you check out the agenda in advance and build your own program basically for uh, today's conference because we will have four different um, stages and four different uh, sessions in parallel in our afternoon program today. So. Um, so you don't miss out on anything, I absolutely invite you to check that out in advance. Maybe to give you a brief overview of what to expect today regarding contents, but also uh, it, uh, to make it a bit easier for you to navigate through the program. Um, we'll all be here together on our main stage uh, for the next, I think it's three hours. Um, before we have a short lunch break, because it's always also necessary to take a short break, uh, please use that time also to uh, share material and network on the platform and of course get something to eat and to drink. And after lunch, we'll separate the stages. There will be four of them, three in English, one in German until 4.30. There will also be a short coffee break uh, to give you an opportunity to breathe again and uh, network on, on the platform and of course grab some coffee and then we'll meet back here again on the main stage for the last two and a half hours of program. I bet most of you uh, have heard the announcements regarding the privacy shield in the in the in the couple of uh, last couple of days, and I'm very pleased that uh, we'll have Alex Greenstein here with us today from the U.S. Department of Commerce. I'm hoping, as I'm sure you do too, uh, for some insights about what's happening exactly and what to expect in the near future, because international data transfers, of course, are one of the core topics of today. In general, I think we have learned yesterday, but also, uh, of course, in the previous uh, month and years, that data is the most important topic to talk about. It's not only um, important for, for innovation and our competitiveness in Europe, but it is basically our future. We are all hoping to solve the big issues, the big problems that we have in, in the world with more information, more data and more data sharing. To achieve that in the future, we have found that it's 
absolutely necessary that we build the data protection and the data sharing environment from the ground up. It will never be a change that will be put on us from above, but we have to change the data ecosystem from below. And that's why we're coming together here in the Bitcoin Privacy Conference and also, of course, in our several working groups to achieve that change. Because making the data innovation, the data economy possible will only work if we work on it together and if we all understand the requirements the uh, regulatory framework puts on us and if we learn to aggregate and uh, yeah, improve the data quality of the data that we already have. It has often been said that data is the new gold, it is uh, the new oil. I, for myself, I have been working in data protection for over 10 years now. I'm still not sure what data is exactly, but I know it's the basis for the future that is to come. And I'm very glad that we'll have the opportunity to, to talk about the different perspectives, also the different hurdles, but also the innovation that is already building up in the data economy. So I invite you all to join as many sessions as you can, be as engaging on the platform as you can and take the most out of our interesting talks and panels and interviews that we have prepared for you today. And that's all for me for now. I'm very happy that I have Susanne Demel today with you. Susanne is a member of our executive board at Bitcom. And Susanne, I give the floor to you to our opening. Thank you, Rebecca. Good morning and a very warm welcome from my side to you. I'm really proud to present um, uh, to uh, this year's Bitcom Privacy Conference 2023 to you. It will once again bring together all the different stakeholders that are necessary to make um, data protection work. And even after more than four years of uh, the uh, GDPR in place, it continues to raise a lot of questions and more regulation for the data economy is yet to come. We will hear a little more about that um, by Commissioner Reinders in a minute. But before that, I want to um, uh, give you some insights in, in our yearly survey on data protection. Um, we have again asked 500 uh, companies in Germany how they handle the GDPR rulebook and what uh, are the major difficulties and challenges in practice. And um, we have seen that the GDPR is still a long way from its goal of creating a uniform approach of applying data protection rules in Europe. This is despite the fact that almost all companies have now at least uh, um, started the way of implementing GDPR. Many say they've already um, done so almost completely. But still 67% of companies praise the fact that the GDPR sets global standards for the handling of personal data. And every second company believes that the GDPR will lead to a level playing field within the EU. But 70% do not yet see uniform data protection across the EU due to the different interpretations of GDPR in the member states. And uh, the assessment with regard to their own company is also predominantly critical. Only 16% see GDPR as a minor, 13% as a major competitive advantage on the international market, whereas 40% cannot see any competitive advantage for their own company, and 30% uh, even see competitive disadvantages for their company in uh, the international market. Um, when, I, when asked about the, um, the hurdles that arise in, in, in the practical implementation, uh, the survey showed that it's mainly external factors that slow the implementation down. Companies are primarily confronted with legal uncertainty and contradictory interpretations of the data protection requirements within Europe and between the German states. And 88% of them find that the implementation of the GDPR is never fully completed because there are new guidelines, for example, new decisions. 78% um, find existing legal uncertainties regarding the requirements of the GDPR a challenge. And 77% have found that the rolling 
the rolling out of new tools always sets a new test in motion. That's maybe not surprising, but it's still some, something that's sometimes forgotten. So 57% um, see the inconsistent interpretation of GDPR within the EU as a problem, and 40%, this is a special German problem, I think, uh, see uh, an inconsistent interpretation within Germany, within the, the States. So almost um, every second company um, would like a little more advice from the supervisory authorities, also something to think about, I think. Um, but also there are internal reasons that might sometimes make things difficult, like 45% say that necessary IT and system changes cost a lot of time, 32% lack financial resources, and 24% lack qualified employees. So around one in four companies does not adequately involve data protection offices and 15% see a general lack of support within the company. So there's also some homework on the sides of the um, companies working on their internal setup. Um, accordingly, um, companies are currently critical of the implementation of data protection in Germany and two thirds state that strict data protection in Germany makes digitization more difficult. And for almost as many, inconsistent interpretation of data protection rules inhibits digitization. And um, what is uh, for me most worrying is that 61% say Germany is overdoing it with data protection. A year ago, that, that figure was only 50%. So this might show a little um, uh, uh, loss in, in the acceptance of, of, of data protection, which I think we, we, we have to do something about. More frequently than in the previous year, companies report that at least one innovation project in the past 12 months failed because of data protection or was not started at all. In 82% of companies, this was due to specific GDPR requirements, and in 93% this was due to lack of clarity in dealing with the requirements. Digitization is crucial for the competitive, co competitiveness of European companies and for the resilience. And digital companies are also the most important innovation driver for all industries. So I think what we now need is finding our balance between enabling data use on the one hand side and keeping up data protection. Data protection must not lead to things not being done. Rather, data protection should lead to um, things being done in the right and privacy protecting way. And I think this can only be achieved with constant work and dialogue to translate legal framework um, into technical and organizational processes. So we are really glad that our conference is one forum to do exactly that. And that is one piece of the puzzle to create a rights-respecting data economy um, that works. And we look forward to discussing this with you today. And of course, we'll continue to work uh, in our Bitcom working group on data protection throughout the year. And now um, I will stop babbling. And um, I'm really looking forward to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Didier Reinders the European Commissioner for Justice in charge of rule of law and consumer protection. We are proud that he has agreed again to join and open our conference this year and lay the groundwork for our discussion. The European Commission has a lot on its plate um, in recent years, formulating a strategy for digitization and the data economy and the recent regulatory proposals will be deciding factors for whether we will stay competitive and innovative and whether we will be able to continue to support our thriving society. Commissioner Reinders ha has agreed to explain what is the most important changes in the regulatory environment or what these changes will be and what the Commission is working on to achieve our common goals. And now Commissioner Reinders Welcome and the floor is yours.